Right? Second Peter 2 2, and many shall follow the pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil be spoken of. Now you've got these false prophets, false teachers that are false converts that are coming in. What is the big reason that Satan loves them? Right there. By reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And if he can get the lost world more false converts to speak evil of truth, if he can get saved sinners to fall away from truth and start speaking evil of truth, he's dancing. He's throwing a big party. False converts are so dangerous today. I believe that. Now, pernicious. Notice it says follow their pernicious ways. Um, all my definitions come from the Webster's 1828 Dictionary because those definitions are based off the King James Bible. Okay? That's why it references the King James Bible a lot as examples to that definition. So, pernicious. Uh, definition number one, destructive, having the quality of killing, destroying, or injuring, very injurious or mischievous. mischievous. Food, drink, or air may be pernicious to life or health. Okay, eating bad foods, uh, alcohol, you know, on and on. Uh, smoking, <laughs> to talk about bad air. But destructive, you know, having the qualities of killing. Um, but the Bible says that you have to hate your enemies, you have to hate your brother. And I can't remember which ones, but there's certain attitudes that if you do it, that it's like saying you're, it's killing. You can kill, that people say you can kill your conscience. I've already corrected that. That's false. You cannot kill your conscience. Okay. It can become weak, it can become defiled, and it can become evil. But you can't kill your conscience. Uh, definition number two, I only said that because I almost said you can kill your conscience. I had to correct myself. I'm not perfect. Uh, definition number two, destructive, tending to injure or destroy Evil examples of pernicious to morals, uh, temperance, or is it pernicious vice? Sometimes I want to read the whole thing, but the important thing is evil examples of pernicious is morals, tending to injure or destroy. Uh, pernicious ways, I believe, have to do with um, the flesh, mainly, you know, uh, the faith alone crowd. You don't have to have a changed life. You don't have, you're no longer, you know, when I, when I believe what we've talked about there, bought, the denying the Lord that bought them, when, we, when I do that study, you'll find out almost that's the only time it talks about where it could be talking about the lost world too. Everywhere else, it's talking about saved sinners that God paid for us. God, you, God owns you. If you're saved, God owns you. He's going to command you, do this, don't do that. But with the faith alone crowd, oh, you can be saved and still just live by the flesh and live so sinful and wicked. But as long as you believe, you're saved. See, uh, they try to get you, these false converts try to get you to follow your pernicious ways. And what's going to happen there? Romans 8.13, For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify, mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. A Bible-believing Christian is going to mortify the deeds of the flesh. They're going to do everything you can to make sure that your heart is right with the Lord. It's always, I would keep saying this, it always comes down to the heart. Every time it comes down to the heart. Um, we talked about when you look for the coming of Jesus Christ, it's how your life is. Are you obeying God? Are you believing what's right? Standing for what's right? right? Um, is your home a godly home? Mm -hmm. Staying from all appearance of evil? So, you don't want to live after the flesh, and what these false converts do is they try to get you to live after the flesh. They do. You look at them, and they're okay with sin. They come in, and they might act, put on a show, like I said, whereby they lie in wait to deceive, and they might put on a show, but you watch them long enough, by their fruits you shall know them. You'll start seeing the rotten fruit. I have a lot of people that will correct me or attack me, and I even got some that are praising me as far as what you're doing is right. Thank you, Lord, for having you do this teaching. And you look at all the things they're subscribed to. And um, there was one guy that he was, I'm saved, I'm saved. And I clicked on it. 
and went down through and I saw a picture of a woman that was kind of immodestly dressed. I'm like, why would a Bible-believing Christian have anything to do with that? And I went through and looked at a lot of stuff and I said, okay, I need to have some grace. Um, maybe the woman's just immodestly, like she's working on dressing modestly, which it's not hard to work on that, okay? It has to do with fighting your flesh on it. Um, men and women can dress modestly easy. It's just, are they willing to look bad according to the lost world or wear dresses they think are ugly just temporary until they can get what they consider nicer dresses? Um, but this guy, I clicked on that video, two of a few videos, I'm like, eh, rock and roll, eh. And I clicked on this one, it comes up. The woman's, I didn't even want to tell you what she was wearing, and I'm like, oh Lord, get off that. And I went on there and told that guy, he ain't saved. There's no way a Bible-believing, God-fearing man would be subscribed to what basically I call porn. Okay? Rock and roll, they'll still be in rock and roll after they've been saved for so many years. Okay? But they push them to live after the flesh. You live after the flesh, you shall die. We are supposed to live after the Spirit. We're supposed to live according to the written Word of God. Um, I've told the story before, and I still love the story about the man who owned two dogs, and you walk up to him, ask him which dog is stronger, and he says, "The one I feed the most." Okay, if you feed the flesh the most, you won't be able to handle the flesh. All the temptations come in; you're going to give in to them every time. Why? Because you feed the flesh. But if you do, do by mortify the deeds of the flesh, I think we did that one. Um, and you feed the spirit. When the temptation comes, it is so easy just to brush into the side like they're nothing. Because you're feeding your spirit. I'm not saying we're perfect. Sometimes we can get tempted big time and we might fall into that temptation. But for the most part, you'll be able to fight temptation in a heartbeat. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. When you feed the spirit, you'll be able to overcome temptation. But what do these false converts want you to do? They want you to feed your flesh. You don't have to have a changed life. Okay? Who's to say what sin is? Who's to say what God's Word is? You know, the Bible perversion people? Romans 6, 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Okay, the wages of sin is death. It means you have to pay for something. Okay, that's why I'm just I'm weary about telling the lost world, present tense, that God paid for your sins, Jesus paid for your sins. So many verses say otherwise. It's like, the only time I feel like when they're contradiction, dicting, you've got to look at the context and the dispensation. Um, the wages of sin is death. Satan wants you to live after the flesh, appeal to the flesh through the lost world, false converts, even through saved sinners that have fallen away. You can accomplish this by false converts. Uh, faith alone is the biggest ones. Sin is not a big deal. Sin is not a big deal to them. Okay? They try to put it with their words, but remember, I always tell people that, yes, words mean something as far as, you know, if I say something bad, like if I cuss at you, if I say, you know, derogatory terms putting you down, then that's bad. It doesn't mean about actions. I'm just trying to compare it to actions. But I also tell people that a lot of times when someone says something, they better have action to back it up. If I believe this is God's perfect written word, my actions, you know, that I'm living it, I'm obeying it, I'm believing in it, you know, I'm fighting against the Bible perversions, your actions need to back it up. And when you have these people say, oh, we take sin seriously, but then they throw repentance out. They throw the changed life out after salvation. And they're living in wicked sin. And their thing is, is you know, with faith alone, God's got grace. You're forgiven. You're going to heaven. It's, it's faith alone. You know, it is grace alone. I might have slipped up and said it wrong. But it's faith alone. You've earned it by your faith. You've earned it. You've got it. It's no big deal how you live your life from this point on. A lot of them try to justify sin. The marks of a false convert is they will justify sin. A saved sinner won't. They will struggle with sin. 
they will always err on the side of caution using the Bible. Don't go too crazy, but if the Bible says something like one of the studies I did recently was um, images of the Godhead. Okay, the Bible says that we are not to make graven images, period, of things in heaven, things on earth, things under the earth, graven images. Then it says we're not to worship them. And people who say, well, they go together, well, here's the thing, so you can make them as long as you don't worship them. But then someone can look at that and go, so I can worship them as long as I don't make them. Because you got to do them together or it doesn't count. See how dumb that is? It's about money. A lot of people who stand for making paintings of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit is a dove, God the Father is an outline, or even an old man, um, like an invisible outline. Uh, Chick Tracks is big on this. It's about money. It's about pleasing the world. It's about traditions of men. So, um, false converts will come in and they want you to feed your flesh. They want to take you away from absolute truth. Now, when we looked at truth, I broke it down into three parts. By the reason of the way of truth, evil is spoken of. Okay, the first part. Who's one of the things that the false converts will try you to get, get you to speak evil against? Okay. Well, they're going to get you to speak evil of the true Jesus. God's perfect written word and the changed life. Those three things. Okay. Change life goes part of uh, the written word, but the biggest thing today that evil is spoken of is the true Jesus Christ. People's true colors are coming through about the Trinity versus the Godhead, and they speak evil of the real God, Jesus Christ of the Godhead. The real Jesus Christ that died on the cross. The real Jesus Christ that has a zero tolerance for sin, not a Jesus, this Antichrist that's okay with sin. John 14, 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Not me, Jesus Christ. Um, Jesus is the way and the truth. So the false converts are going to come in and start be speaking evil of the real Jesus Christ. They're going to try to pull people away, the great falling away that's going on today, from the real Jesus Christ, denying the Lord that bought them. If the world hate you, sorry, John 15, verse 8. We're going to go to John 14, 15, verse 8. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. They're going to try to pull you away from the real Jesus Christ, the true gospel, uh, the Godhead, um, the pre-time of Jacob's trouble, eternal security, okay, the Jesus on the cross that said, it is finished. The blood that was spilled on the cross, that's God the Father's blood. Jesus is the Father. There's only one God, the Father. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6. There's only one God, the Father. So if Jesus is not the Father, then His blood can do nothing. And people mock us who believe in the true Godhead. They love their fake Jesus. They will speak evil of the real Jesus, the true Jesus. They're going to speak evil of truth. What does it say back here? Uh, by the reason of whom the way of truth evil is spoken of. Okay. John chapter 8, verse 44. Ye are of your father, the devil. And the lust of your father will ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh the lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. This Jesus of the faith alone crowd is Satan. It's an antichrist. The Jesus of the... Uh, you've got to do good works and merit salvation, die in a state of grace. They worship Satan, a false Jesus, Antichrist. People who teach post-trib, if they're falling away, they're still promoting an Antichrist, a false Jesus. 
People are against eternal security. They're promoting an antichrist, a false Jesus. They're promoting Satan. There's only two to choose from. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who is God, or Satan. Many times Jesus right here says, you are of the, your father the devil. If you're against true biblical repentance, you're against the pre-time of Jacob's trouble catching away the body of Christ, you're against eternal security, you're against dispensational teachings because you're going to make a mess of the Bible, which is why you're off on eternal security and pre-times of Jacob's trouble and the gospel. Um, the Bible version issue, you know, you're of your father the devil. You're worshiping an antichrist. So when we go to tell you true Bible-believing Christians, go to tell the lost world, our professing Christians, about the true Jesus Christ, they'll speak evil of you. They'll mock you. They'll hate you. Okay? Remember, if they hate you, know they hated me first. Jesus Christ saying this. Today, a lot of people, a lot of people in this world, they hate the true Jesus Christ of Scripture. They hate Him. They, they want to make up their own Jesus Christ. A Jesus Christ that gives them what they want, lets them do what they want. Okay? Speaking evil of the real Jesus. Uh, the biggest example today, the biggest thing going on today, to pull, pull, pull people away from absolute truth. Uh, I'm looking at something real quick. Yeah, we talked about 2 Peter 2, chapter 2. Um, how many will follow their pernicious ways. I'm just trying to remember what chapter we're on in our expository study. Um, one of the big truths uh, that they speak of the Jesus Christ today is the Trinity versus the Godhead. That is the biggest thing that's going on today because they're trying to prepare people for the Antichrist. They don't want nothing to do with the Jesus of the Bible, the true Jesus of the Godhead. They want nothing to do with them. They hate him. They mock us for standing for the Godhead. Uh, a brother did a video showing how these buildings, these Baptist buildings, uh, Catholic temples, pagan temples, uh, they're starting to throw people out that stand for the Godhead. They're throwing people out that question the Trinity because the word Trinity is not in the Bible. That's not a title for God, and they're making it out to be a title for God, and it's not. Godhead is the title for God. Now, I still believe they're wrong. They're promoting an antichrist and a false Jesus. But if someone came up to me and said, I believe in the Godhead, God in three persons, God the Father, God the Son. I always have to say lowercase g, God the Son, lowercase g, God the Holy Spirit, because there's only one capital G, God the Father. I would stop and go, okay, that, at least that person isn't an idiot, okay? He's not tr trying to anger God by replacing his title, Godhead, with Trinity. Now, they hate the true Jesus of Scripture. These faith alone, these Babel buildings, uh, Charismatics, Mormons, Jehovah's Witness, um, Lutherans, Methodists, Catholics, they all, they hate hate the real Jesus Christ. They love their Antichrist Jesus that is not the truth, the way, the truth, and the life. Okay. Another one, pre-time of Jacob's trouble. Instead of looking for Jesus Christ to come, they want to look for an Antichrist. They love their Antichrist Jesus. They hate the true Jesus of Scripture. And they will mock those who stand for the pre-time of Jacob's trouble catching away the body of Christ. They're going to mock you. I've had a few mock me, but not. I haven't been attacked hardcore. But you know what? If I continue making videos and standing for absolute truth, I know the attacks are coming. They're coming. The plan of salvation. Um, I had a woman that I thought was saved that when you talk to her, she was supporting... Um, Robert Breaker and King James Video Ministries at the same time, two different Gospels, and now after listening to her talk and how quick she turned her back on the true Gospel, um, I don't believe she was saved. I believe she's actually a false convert. But she said, you, you have a God that chooses who to save? That's not my God. And they call 
us who stand for the true Jesus Christ, they're starting to call us Calvinists because we say that if your heart's not right, God's not going to save you. If you don't repent, believe, confess both in prayer, call upon the name of the Lord to save you, come to God broken in all the heart, you repent in the heart. Sorrow happens in the heart. Sorrow for sinning against God happens in the heart. And when you have sorrow for sinning against God, you don't just have the head knowledge of the gospel, it reaches your heart. I've said this before, a um, brother told me this once, that you can miss heaven by, I think, 12 or... You can miss heaven by 13 inches. It's up here, but it's not down here. Okay? Um, God looks at the heart. The Word talks about the Word pierces, and it's a, it looks at the thoughts and intents of the heart. I'm paraphrasing. Okay? It comes down to the heart every time. Your heart's not right. God will not save you. He won't. So, so when they say you serve a God that chooses to save you and chooses not to, they automatically think we're trying to talk about Calvinism. You have a free will. God gave it to you. You have your whole life while you're alive and breathing to repent, believe, confess both in prayer and call upon the name of the Lord to save you. To get your heart in the right place and fall before the... And, you know, fall before the foot of the cross, before Jesus Christ. Lay in that iniquity that you're holding in your heart, you put it at the foot of the cross. You have your whole life to do it. But you die in your sins, God's not going to save you. Period. If you reject the true gospel, God is not going to save you, period. But third Jesus, if you believe, He'll save anybody and everybody. All you have to do is believe. They hate the true gospel. They hate the true Jesus Christ. The God that would send, there's a lot of people, God wouldn't send me to hell, I'm a good person. What kind of God would send me to hell? Well, a righteous God would. An all-powerful, all righteous God that's going to judge you one day will send you to hell if you reject Jesus Christ. The true Jesus Christ. So, false converts get you to hate the real Jesus and worship a false one, the falling away. Satan loves false converts for doing this. He wants, Satan wants to be worshipped as God. Why people can't understand this? Satan wants to be Jesus. He always is counterfeiting Jesus. He's always counterfeiting God. So why would it be a shock to some people that... Uh, they're, they're worshiping a false Jesus with the faith alone crowd, um, do enough works to be saved crowd. Uh, Jesus, our, Satan loves to be worshipped as Jesus, a false Jesus, an antichrist. So when you tell people, going through again, when you tell people about the real Jesus Christ, they hate the real Jesus Christ, and they're going to hate you. Remember, they hated him first, they hate Jesus, the real Jesus Christ, so it's no wonder they're going to hate you. Now, another false Jesus that has a lighter attitude towards sin and a Jesus that hates sin. Those are the two, okay? You have the false Antichrist Jesus that gives the people what they want. You want to feed your flesh? You want to indulge your flesh? I'll give you me as a false Jesus that's okay with sin. Not a big deal. There's no changed life. You don't have to hate sin. Um... Proverbs 8.13 um, The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy and the evil way, sin, and the froward mouth, do I hate. You're to have that same attitude. You're to hate sin, the evil way. You're to hate pride, arrogancy, okay, froward mouth. Now, so, one of the truths that false converts, that Satan loves about false converts, is because they worship him. He loves to be worshipped as Jesus Christ. And they get, they pull Bible believing Christians, people I believe are truly saved, they get them to fall away and start worshipping a false Jesus Christ. And then when you try to let them know, hey, brother and sister, you're falling away and you correct them through Scripture, they get angry at you, almost as if they're starting to hate the real Jesus Christ. Now, 
The next thing when it comes to absolute truth that um, let's see by the reason of whom the way of truth is evil spoken of right here this right here the King James Bible God's perfect written word in English so Matthew 24:35 Mark 13:31 Luke 21:33 Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. We have been promised that God's perfect written word will always be available. Now people say, was this book always available? No. This book's been available for 400 years. And it's got everything in it together in one collection, which makes it superior. Um, than the other ones because people would just have manuscripts that was like a few pages of, like a few chapters of Peter that they would read. And then they'd have manuscripts over here, everything was separated, but they still had manuscripts that were true to the original letters that were written. Right? The originals don't exist anymore. They don't. We've had faithful copies that come up to you today, now we have the King James Bible. But when they say that only the originals are God's perfect written word, what they're saying is they're calling God a liar. The originals don't exist anymore. All they have is copies. Now, there is no perfect written word of God today. That's a lie. Why? Because Satan loves using false converts to, to pass on his famous saying, Yea, hath God said. He loves his false converts. I'm beginning to believe today that when people say this man's a servant of Satan, that man's a, or that woman's a servant of Satan that you see online that are promoting heresies and Bible perversion, that I believe they're false converts. And their head, because it's not in their heart, in their head, they believe they're saved. And God and Satan uses that. Okay. Uh, yea, hath God said, who's to say what's right? Therefore, I can believe in any gospel I want. I can believe in post-trib if I want. I can believe against, like, fight against eternal security. I can grab a Bible that tells me what I want to hear, what I want to believe. I can find a Bible that suits me. There was a comic that if I can find it, I'll post it up here, that um, there's a guy that looks all worldly. I mean, they got him drawn up like he looks all worldly. There's a booth with, thou not thousands, but tons of Bible versions. And she's selling Bibles, there's a person behind the booth, and the guy walks up there and says, I want a Bible that suits me. Yea, hath God said. People buy it, and people want it. They want to believe what they want to believe, they want to live how they want to live, they want to be part of whatever group they want to be part of. It's not about absolute truth to them. Hebrews 4.12, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. False converts don't like this. Satan doesn't like this. And of the joints and marrow, and is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. This book pierces straight through the heart and tells you who you are. You are dirty, rotten, filthy, low down, no good sinner on your way to hell. People don't like that. People in this faith alone crowd, um, yeah, we're all sinners, but they don't want a perfect written word, or they don't want to abide by it, because you got a lot of fakes and frauds trying to say they're Bible-believing when they're not, because they, because when they read this, it pierces their heart and tells them what they're doing is wrong. You need to stop doing that. You need to stop doing that over there too. You need to start doing this. You need to start reading your Bible. You need to start cleaning up your home. You need to start living right, dressing right, eating right. Okay? You need to believe what the Bible says, not what you want to believe. There's plenty of times I've had to correct myself because I went into a study with preconceived ideas and God corrected me with Scripture. I've had Bible-believing uh, brothers and sisters in Christ correct me with scripture, but they don't want a perfect written word. And those who claim that this is a perfect written word, they're still trying to manipulate it, mis uh, twist scripture, add to the word, take away from the word, even though they claim they're Bible believing and that this is God's perfect written word. Goes back to Satan wanting you to feed your flesh and not your spirit. He does this through the lost world, false Bibles 
and false converts. He wants you to feed your flesh because if Satan can use false converts, the lost world and false Bibles, false gospels, if he can get you to feed your flesh, he can control you easier. Um, someone once told me, uh, a brother in Christ said that in order to control people, all you have to do is, I think it was, food, sex, and entertainment. Those three things. And all three of those things is the flesh. You feed their flesh, you can control them. That's what Satan wants, and he uses false converts to do it. Oh, you don't need to change life. You, you don't have, Jesus said, be holy as I am holy. Oh, he didn't really mean that. I mean, come on, how are we going to be holy like Jesus is? See, that makes it a lie because we can't be holy as Jesus. No, but we're supposed to strive to be. We're supposed to strive to say, God, I want you. One of the things I always say is I talk with the Lord and said, I don't know if this will ever be possible, but I'd love to hear you tell me, like he told, talks about King David, about me being a man after God's own heart. That I'm seeking God day and night. God to stand there and say, well done, thou good and faithful one. Okay? Satan wants you to feed your flesh. Now, why does he want you to feed your flesh through false Bibles? This is why. If there's no perfect written word today, word today, A, you can't, be, you can't get saved if there wasn't a perfect written word today. Uh, you couldn't know that you have eternal security. Satan doesn't want you to know that. You couldn't know that uh, how to love Jesus Christ. So many people say, I love Jesus Christ. Do, do, you, do you believe in a perfect written word? Oh, no, there's no perfect written word. The Bible says, you know, to love Jesus Christ is to keep his word. And we'll get to that. I'm getting ahead of myself. John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. No perfect written word. Satan gets you to think there's no perfect written word. Then you can't be sanctified through thy truth. Talking about Jesus Christ. Being the way, the truth, and the life. Psalms 119.9 Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? Okay? How do you fight sin? How do you fight temptation? By feeding your spirit. How do you feed your spirit? By the word of God. If there's no perfect written word of God, you're not capable of fighting sin. You didn't have the word of God before you were saved. Were you able to fight sin then? No. People say, well, I wasn't, I wasn't a murderer. I wasn't a rapist. You know, I wasn't a drunk, a drug addict. But they still are a sinner. They're not able to fight sin. In fact, I justified a lot of sin as a false convert. And I look back... I did a lot of damage throughout my life as a false convert. I was serving Satan. I wasn't serving Jesus Christ. It wasn't until Jesus Christ brought me to my knees, brought me to the Bible version issue, brought me to the true gospel, that I was able to ask God to save me and for God to start using me and me to start serving the real Jesus Christ, not a fake one. John 14, 15, if, I'm, if you love me, keep my commandments. How are you supposed to struggle with sin and do your best to keep God's commandments if there's no perfect written word today? The way of truth, evil spoken of? Uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. John chapter 14, verse 23, Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. There's two parts to this verse. I used to always just say the first part, man. If you love Jesus Christ, you're going to keep his word. Uh, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The adulterers and adulteresses, uh, know ye not that friendship of the world is enemy of God? Whosoever shall be a friend to the world is the enemy of God. 
command after command after command. Love your brother. Talking about saved sinners. Um, your love for the lost world is preaching the gospel. Command after command. You're supposed to be holy as I'm holy. You're supposed to do your best. Command after command after command. Okay? That's how you love Jesus Christ. You don't just say, I just got a feeling. My love for God, for Jesus Christ, is just a feeling in here. No, your love for Jesus Christ is your action. Are you keeping this book? God's perfect written word. Are you believing in it? Are you standing for it? Okay. The second part, if you're not doing that, um, let's see, if a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Okay. I'm not saying as a saved sinner that if you start falling off in areas and start you know, giving into the flesh that God's not going to you know, love you and He's not going to come and make His abode with you. He's going to take His Holy Spirit from you. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying for those lost people that reject the perfect written Word of God and say, I love Jesus, I love Jesus, and they're not even trying to keep God's perfect written Word, God doesn't love them. Okay, present tense, that's present tense. God does not love them present tense. It goes back to the gospel. Uh, for God so loved, past tense. They want God's love, they go to the cross. But in this topic right here, God doesn't love them if they're not gonna, if they, if they fight and go against God's perfect written word and want nothing to do with it. Okay? He won't come and make his abode with them. You cannot get saved. Um, I didn't write this down, I don't think. Um, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know you have eternal life. I think I said this already. Um, and, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. It's only because of this perfect written record that you're able to believe on Jesus Christ. I don't believe there's a perfect written record. God will not come and make His abode with you. You cannot get saved if you never come to the knowledge of the truth that this is God's perfect written word. I didn't say, I always said it wrong. Um, you can get saved, and then God brings you to this. But most people I've talked to, they got saved after God brought them to the knowledge of the truth. Um, my biggest thing is, is people who say they've been saved for 20 years, and it took them 20 or 30 years to come to the knowledge of the truth of the King James Bible. I'm very, you know, eerie to, to agree with them that they were saved 30 years ago if they just came to the knowledge of the truth of the King James Bible. Okay? You can get saved and then God brings you to the truth, but the Bible says that the Holy Spirit will bring you into all truth. Not just some, all truth. And the rebellion that happens is when you're fighting your flesh. I fought it for two years. I made a mess of things as a uh, baby Christian because I was studying. I was studying very hard. I was learning, but I was struggling giving up things of the flesh. That part is a struggle, but God will bring you into all truth. Why does Satan want to get rid of the Word? Because he doesn't want you to love Jesus Christ. He wants you to love Him and worship a fake Jesus Christ. By taking away absolute truth, Satan is trying and succeeding in keeping people from loving Jesus Christ. He gets people to doubt God's Word, and then man becomes the final authority. He pleads to the flesh, and that's the biggest thing about this, there's no perfect written Word of God. Yea, hath God said, you get to be a final authority. You've got people that are Bible-believing, supposedly Bible-believing, God-fearing men, and maybe even some women out there that are teaching, and their attitude is, it's, what's your opinion? What do you feel about it? What's your opinion? They're not standing for absolute truth. And the areas that they say, what's your opinion? What's your feelings? You know, sometimes it has to do with they know they're teaching wrong, but they're teaching what they're teaching appeals to the flesh. Uh, predicting when Jesus is coming. There's a difference between when you say, I, I think this means this, and I'm going to stand for it meaning this, but if you can prove me wrong, what do you think? Scripture, show me Scripture. You know, am I wrong in this? It's not major doctrine, it's just I think this is this. You know, especially when people talk a lot about the time of Jacob's trouble. Um, I think this is what's going to happen. What do you think? 
because we're not going to be there. But uh, they, Satan likes to take the final authority and put it in the hands. I'm not taking, I'm talking about putting the Bible in their hands. I'm talking about taking the Bible away and, let, and saying, man, woman, you can be the final authority. You can live how you want. You can believe what you want as long as you worship me. Because there's only two people. You're either worshiping Jesus Christ or you're worshiping Satan. Atheists are worshiping Satan. Whether they want to admit it or not, it doesn't matter. There's only two sides. Jesus or Satan. Satan prevents a changed life by getting rid of the Word of God. And that, let's see, Satan is preventing a changed life, creating false converts. And, the, and those false converts will create more false converts. And those more false converts will create more false converts. See, it's like a plague. It's a disease. Okay. Easy believism is the biggest example. The faith alone crowd. No changed life. People love that. If you tell them all you have to do is believe in Jesus Christ and you can, nothing has to change, you can live however you want, you can keep uh, everything that you're doing, you know, and if you feel like you want to give it up, then yeah. Or if the Bible says you should, yeah, you should, but you know, I'm not going to judge you and I'm not going to give you a hard time. I mean, if you want to keep it, eh, it's between you and God. And granted, it is, but that person should be correcting that person with Scripture and to do it sternly. Not with anger, not with hate, but be stern about it. You're still watching porn, you need to get away from it. That was a big struggle for me. You need to get away from it. It is sin, it's wickedness, it's not a choice. You need to get away from it. Alcohol, being alcoholic, cigarettes. Um, you know, when's the last time you read your Bible? Eh, it's been a week. You're supposed to be reading your Bible every day. You're supposed to be staying in the Word every day. You're supposed to be, say it with authority is the best way to say it. You don't just, you know, if you want to change, you know, if you're doing all this wicked sin, you don't have to give it up after you get saved. All you do is believe and you can continue in any life you're living. It's no big deal. The change is just going from unbelief to belief. It says you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. Behold, no, old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Not just your beliefs and your stands, but physically also. All things become new. Your life is going to start changing after you get saved. They don't want you to love Jesus. Satan, Satan is using false converts to resurrect the old man. And false converts, or no, false converts are trying to get Bible-believing, God-fearing men and women to resurrect the old man. Mankind, the old woman, the old man. Okay. Let's see. The old man and the true Bible believing Christians are to create false converts that stay with the old man. See, that's what it is. The uh, false converts love for you to stay. Uh, they love staying with the old man. They love the old man. They don't want to give up the old man. They don't want to die and be buried with Jesus Christ. They just want to believe in Him, that's all. They want to believe that He took their sins away so they get to go to heaven. But they don't want to be dead and buried with Jesus Christ. They want to keep the old man. No new man. To keep them from loving the real Jesus Christ in the KJV, we talked about that, many will follow their pernicious ways. 2 Corinthians 5, chapter 5, verse 17, about the new man. This is what I quoted already. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, behold, or no, old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. See if I got that right. Yep, old things. I always try to put the behold first and it's the second one. Ephesians 4.22, that ye put off concerning the former conversation of conversation, the old man. Okay? The old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. And it goes through and talks about some of that lust. Okay, you're to put off the old man. There is to be a changed life. Colossians 3.9 Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. The old man is supposed to be dead and buried with Jesus Christ, and the new man is resurrected with Jesus Christ. Death, burial, and resurrection, the true gospel. 
But these faith alone, it's not about a, the new man. You're not a new creature in Christ Jesus. You know, you can just keep the old man. But the point for the study, Satan loves his false converts because if he can get you a saved sinner, a Bible-believing, God-fearing man or woman out there, if he can get you to try to resurrect, I was guilty, try to get you to resurrect the old man, God has to punish him. God has to punish you. He can get God to punish you. Well, it's your fault. You can't just say it's Satan's fault because you're the one that gave in. But if he can get you, tempt you enough to get you to fall into temptation and resurrect the old man, God has to punish you. He uses false converts to do this. Oh, there's no changed life. You got saved the right way. You're trying to live according to the Bible. Oh, that's, that's wrong. That's, that's works-based. You know, you don't have to have a changed life. You can go back to the old man. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with movies and TV shows, video games. Now, I don't know of anybody that would say porn is wrong, but I have come across lots of people um, when I was in the military that they didn't think anything was wrong with porn or going to certain bars. Um, but for the most part, people won't say that's wrong, because they always, but they use extremes saying, yeah, that's wrong. Um, you know, being a murderer, uh, a whore, uh, I want to say whoremonger, um, but, you know, it's just all sin should be negative to them. All, they should hate all sin, and they don't. They pick and choose what they think is sin and what's not. Um, they love, keep, the false converts love keeping the old man, and the old man goes back to the two things. The old man worships Satan. The new man worships Jesus Christ. If Satan can keep you keeping, like get you to believe you're saved, but get you to keep the old man, meaning you're lost, he can keep you serving, not you, but the lost world, he can keep them serving him and worshiping him. And like I said, if he can use his false converts and the lost world to get you to try to resurrect the old man, he can f not force God, but he knows God will have to punish you. He gets a big kick out of that. He loves the... Jesus punishes you as a father with a child because he loves you. But Satan loves to see God's children get punished. Go through the Old Testament. So, putting off the old man. We still got a lot further to go because we only did two chapters, or two verses. So, I'm going to end it here for part one, and we will continue in part two. Uh, false converts. Satan loves his false converts. Why? Because of what we talked for before. He, he's against truth. He wants to bring out false prophets, false teachers. And the truth, it's always going to come down to these two things. He's going to want to prevent you from getting saved. And I'm not saying you can stand before God and say, it's not my fault, it's Satan's fault. But he's trying to prevent people from getting saved. And the best way, he's not an idiot, no matter what, you know, like chick tracks, you watch some, watch some of the chick tracks and the comic books, they kind of make Satan out to be kind of dopey and his minions come up with the ideas and he claims it's his idea like he's an idiot. Satan's not an idiot. He's not. His biggest weapon today is false converts. If he can get you to think you're saved, when you're lost, worshiping him as a false Jesus, an antichrist, he succeeded because it's so hard to deal with those type of people. And we'll get to that in the next parts of the study about you know false converts, how they're hard to deal with, trying to preach the gospel to them. So he false converts promote other false converts. So his main part, main two parts as you read through this, is he gets creates false converts. Because he gets worship from them. They're worshiping false Jesus. And it makes it twice to ten times to fifty times harder for them to come to the knowledge of the truth. For them to get saved. It's hard. It's not easy for someone like that to get saved. Now, the second one is to pull Bible-believing Christians away. If he can pull Bible-believing Christian away and get them to worship him, get them to indulge the flesh, God will have to punish him. They succeeded in pulling him away from the truth. Um, 
you know, get them to deny the Lord that bought them and to get them to um, bring in damnable heresies, promote damnable heresies, and even start preaching damnable heresies, teaching them. So false prophets and teachers, but the two points so far is to keep people from getting saved and to worship Satan as a false Jesus and to pull people that are truly saved away from absolute truth, get them to deny the Lord that bought them and get them to bring in damnable heresies and get them to worship a fake Jesus. Nothing will make God matter. Remember in the Old Testament, God is a jealous God. He's a jealous God. You want to make God really angry? Deny the Lord that bought you and start worshiping false God, a false Jesus Christ. You want to talk about chastening coming down on you hardcore. Okay. So this will be part one of the study. I hope uh, you guys have followed me along and stayed with me so far. This is a huge study that I did, and we will see you in the next part.